Okay, good afternoon, it's Dr. Jensen here. Today we're going to look at a few practice problems dealing with unit conversion of things like moles and mass and molecules. And so what we have, generally when we're doing these kinds of unit conversions, usually the way I look at this is as kind of like a process flowchart here, where Early on, we're gonna be dealing with just doing mass and mole conversions. And here we use the molecular weight to do this kind of conversion. And then oftentimes the questions may involve calculating things like molecules. Um, early chapters usually involve dealing with volume and density. So if we wanna convert from volume to mass, we need to have the density. If we wanna convert from mass to moles, we need the molecular weight. Uh, later on in some chapters, they usually will either introduce later molarity, which allows you to convert from volumes to uh, moles without needing the density. And also later on, molecules tend to drop off as an area of interest. And we start getting into more chemical reactions where we want to convert from moles of one kind of chemical to moles of some other kind of chemical. Um, in here, we would also introduce the balanced equation, but that also involves things like uh, again, balancing reactions and things like that that we'll cover at a later video, okay? So in this case, our first question here, we wanna know if we have 11.8 grams of argon, we wanna know how many moles is that? Okay, so essentially we're starting here. The A and the B don't really matter. They're just some, some object A and some object B. So we just need to worry about this side of the equation at this point, okay? So we want to convert from the mass of argon to moles of argon. And so the flowchart helps us to come up with what information do I need in order to process this? And we need the molecular weight, okay? So uh, usually in most classes, at least I can't imagine that they make you memorize the periodic table too early. Okay. Have for argon, the molecular weight, 39.95 grams per mole. Again, this is the number that's right off the periodic table. And so from the process chart, we're gonna start with things that are not on the arrows. So in this case, again, when we're looking at these problems, the simplest term is generally where you wanna start. So gram is the simpler term than grams per mole. So there's two units over here versus one unit. So you wanna start with the simplest unit. Okay. And so when we set this up, we want to set my unit that's opposite to be the same. Okay, so the 39.95 grams. Okay, so the mass goes on the bottom, so it's opposite. And then the moles end up on the top. Okay, and so then we just, this allows us to identify that we should divide the mass by the molecular weight. And we get 0.295 moles. All right. So that's a pretty easy one. Again, the other way is to go backwards. So if we're given something like moles and we want to know what is the mass, we would multiply by the molecular weight. Okay, the process flowchart doesn't indicate like down is always divide and up is always multiply. It doesn't always work that way. All right. So here, Okay, so this is stepping it up a little bit in difficulty. Here we wanna know, we're given the number of molecules. It doesn't matter if it's molecules or atoms, okay? Uh, any object, really any object that you deal with can be used with Avogadro's number. Again, Avogadro's number, the mole, if we remember is, is just like a number of units, is like saying a dozen. If I have a dozen pennies, I have 12 pennies. If I have a dozen atoms of lead, I have 12 atoms of lead. So a, a mole is simply 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of lead, or it could be molecules of lead oxide. It can be you know, a mole of pennies is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pennies. So it doesn't really matter what this is. Often you see this as molecules, atoms, or ions, 
will be another reference or it could be electrons. Okay, any one of these things can be the, the point of inquiry here. But here we're starting from atoms and we wanna get up to the mass. So this means that I'm gonna need at least two steps here. Okay, my first step, I'm, again, I'm gonna start from the molecules. We don't start any on, on the arrow parts. So we're gonna, we're gonna use Avogadro's number and then we're gonna use the molecular weight. So it should process in two, two steps, okay? All right, let me see if I get my, okay. Okay, and so my first step was Avogadro's number. So Avogadro's number is really, 6.02 times 10 to the 20, 23rd atoms in one mole. So since I was starting with atoms up here, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole. Okay, so it's just the definition of Avogadro's number. And then we use the molecular weight of lead, again, another thing that's off the periodic table. So here for every one mole, there are, uh, so where's my number? I lost my page. It's 200 something. There we go, 207, two grams, All right? So this is where, when you're doing your calculus here, especially if you have uh, a graphing calculator, it's good to use, good to use a lot of parentheses when you're doing this. So it's gonna be the top numbers multiplied then divided by the bottom numbers, okay? So it's multiply, divide. So it doesn't really matter how you do it. It'll end up the same, same thing, but you go ahead and multiply the numbers on the top, divide the numbers on the bottom. Again, using parentheses when, when you do this in your calculator can help. And so we end up with, 61.95 grams. And then of course, then you would apply various things like the sig figs and things like that. Again, uh, if we're looking at sig fig rules, there's only two sig figs here. So technically my answer would have two significant figures and you can put this in scientific notation in order to, uh, to work that out. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at a more challenging problem. Okay, so this one involves a little bit more. Here we have 136 microliters of ammonium acetate. We wanna know how many molecules is that? Okay, so here, since we're starting from a volume, okay, it's not easy, we don't, we don't have molarity a lot of times in early chapters, we haven't talked about molarity yet oftentimes. So we're gonna need the density, okay, which would be something that'd have to be given in the problem, which we're gonna use in a second. So we need the density, we need the molecular weight, and we need Avogadro's number, okay? So we're gonna have at least one, two, three steps to get down to our answer, okay? Now, because it's also in microliters, it's not generally in the straight volume unit, and so the there is some upfront conversion that has to be done as well. So the other thing here, so we need to have 1.061 grams per milliliter. Okay, so we have the density. All right. Uh, then we need also the molecular weight from our, our flow chart there. I was talking about the molecular weight. But oftentimes this is used where we're not even get we're not given the formula. So you also have to be studying your, your nomenclature. So we have to be paying attention to a variety of factors for a problem like this. Things like nomenclature, uh, things like calculating molecular weights. So this is kind of a multi-part problem. So we need to know ammonium acetate. Okay. So you would need to know how to put the formula together, and then we could calculate the molecular weight. Right? That's from all. All right, so now we have a whole bunch of numbers, right? But at least some of the, but most of these are from our flowchart here, where we needed the molecular weight. 
we needed to have the density and Avogadro's number is a constant, okay? So let's look at how we would set this up here. Change pens here and see if this uh, helps. And All right, so again, starting, if we have all these numbers, we're still starting from the volume. Again, whether it's from the flow chart that we understand we're starting from the volume, or we understand we're starting from the volume because of the simplest term. Okay, uh, so we would need to do some conversions because our density is in milliliters. Uh, milliliters might be our destination that we want to get to. So there's a thousand microliters in one milliliter. Okay. So again, microliters is 10 to the sixth. So there's, there's 10 to the six microliters in one liter, right? And then there are a thousand milliliters in one liter, right? So I'm just, I'm just, so this is 10 to the third, right? So the difference between these two is 10 to the third, right? So there's a, there's a thousand microliters in one, in one milliliter, right? So then from here, I can use my density. So the, the mass part is separate from the milliliters. So in the milliliter, so there's 1.061 grams, grams per milliliter. Okay, so again, I'm, what I'm, I'm leading with the opposite term. So I'm looking for what, what needs to go opposite first, and that gives me my basis of what is my next step, okay? This is leading my term. So from the milliliters, something with milliliters. Grams, I need something with grams. So again, my flow chart indicated that once I was at mass, then my next step was my molecular weight, okay? So my 77.08 grams per mole, And then my last step in one mole, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So we wanna multiply all the numbers on the top, divide numbers on the bottom, okay? If we're looking at a multiple choice kind of problem, one thing we wanna look for first off is if we're looking for molecules, this is generally gonna be a large number. It's gonna be a big number. It should end up with, well, there's gonna be a, doesn't even matter how, how much stuff there is. Even in a microliter of solution, we're gonna end up with a lot of molecules. So we would expect to have a big number. So the numbers can't be something like five. Right, it's not gonna end up being like 5.5 .5 molecules. It's gonna be something in the 10 to the 20 range. And so we multiply all the numbers on the top, divide by all the numbers on the up with 1.121 times 10 to the 21 molecules, okay. Again, your sig figs would play, play a role here. Uh, if we go back, you know, if we have four sig figs, this is not really counted. The density can be whatever sig figs really we, we want. We have four sig figs in our molecular weight. Um, we can use, th this is not really a driving factor because Avogadro's number has a whole bunch of other numbers in there. So you could do 6.023 to get your four sig figs. So it's still gonna end up being four sig figs. So you would really, you know, so you, you would have four sig figs as your answer, mostly from your main initial volume as your primary driver. Okay, so, so that looks at a couple of practice problems dealing with unit conversion with moles and molecular weight, looking at molecules, uh, we can come back and look at some balancing equations and then we'll look at these. These same kinds of skills are gonna be used in later chapters where we're looking at things like converting from, again, doing chemical reactions. 
calculating mass to moles, moles to mass is going to be an important skill that we have to be able to do for other practice problems. Down okay, so being able to go back and forth from mass to moles, we have to be able to do that. We have to be able to calculate molecular weights. Okay, so those things are generally going to be skills that you'll continue to use beyond whatever initial chapter this gets introduced at. All right, that's it for today.